This is Freddie News Review, the podcast. And now, America's independent voice, Rob Reddy. Uh, speaking of Michael Jordan, we have the Michael Jordan of philosophy on the phone with us. Dr. Tommy Curry, talking tell with Dr. Tommy Curry every Thursday. It's already Thursday, Tommy? It's yeah, been a long week. Long Man. Week. Long week. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing, Rob? Good. What are we talking about today? Today I want to talk about the loss of black history. Okay. All right, so as we all know, it's Black History Month, and, and like most objects in the United States, uh, black history has now become a commodity. Uh, it's become a celebration that's been hijacked by integration sentiments, liberal whites, post-Obama celebrationists, and they demand that we celebrate every attempt of black people to become black Americans. But what we don't talk about are how black people create and use different strategies and theories to become free. Uh, it's now become a symbol, an event, a recount of uh, passionate but empty uh, attempts to use nonviolence in a violent and anti-black society to tell us how we've gotten along and how we could cope based on these symbols. Uh, and unfortunately, it's in many ways excluded and left unanswered the question of why black people still uh, suffer violence today. I mean, the black, in the post-Obama era, black people, uh, along with many Americans, have learned that the most severe forms of anti-black racism were eradicated we, by desegregation. So even when we see incidences like the Dorner situation, where we see incidents like the Jordan Davis situation, where we see the Trayvon Martin situation, uh, we believe that these things are accidents and not natural to the American society. And we're taught that the only parts of racism that actually remain are not state-sponsored violence against blacks, but those small psychological and personal biases, those small vestiges of color bias uh, that's shared by blacks and whites. So now we have this idea of reverse discrimination. If we took a serious look on the history of black people, it should inspire within us a recognition of American violence against blacks that range from the assassination of, of nonviolent people like Dr. Martin Luther King, which was proven, by the way, uh, in a lawsuit in 1999 that the government assassinated King, to the recent murder of uh, Chris Dorner, who claimed that his rampage was in many ways rooted to state-sponsored violence against black people, and that he was meeting violence with violence. Uh, we have to look at black history as more than the icons and the ridiculous caricatures that are approved by white America. Uh, black history represents concepts, organizations, the acceptance of character of white America that is fundamentally anti-black. And it says to us that as black citizens, black history is important in highlighting the contradiction of America, a place where violence against black people and immigrants and the genocide of indigenous people have been seen as necessary, as a normal and natural part of American government. If we paid attention to this history, it shows that contradiction. It would expose the contradiction today of why you can use militarism, state-sponsored technology, drones against American citizens, because those are the same type of terroristic ideas and techniques that were used against black people that remain unquestioned because of the color of their skin. But now that we have a politicized and militarized citizenry where the government says that it can kill and patrol people, people don't have any concepts or explanations to explain that because in white America, in a white republic, white people were given safety against black people. But the experiences of militarism and government state violence is all too familiar to black people. So the constant attacks that we see today on black studies, ethnic studies, is not so much a concept uh, a conflict over the content and the ideas, but rather it's a attempt to censor and de-radicalize the revolutionary possibilities that black people saw from slavery on forward. If we are serious about understanding black history, if we take Carter G. Woodson at his, at his word, then what we're talking about is the idea and ability of a group of people who are oppressed in the United States to not only claim the past events, the past suffering that they suffered, but to claim those types of things for concepts that we can use in the present day. And if we keep eliminating that or using that as just symbolism, if we use it as only something that's multicultural to teach other white people about racism, we misunderstand what Woodson was actually doing when he created Black History Week. He's, he was very specific that you can't imitate your oppressors' economics, their philosophy, their religion, their ethics, or respect their laws, and not expect to be drawn into the type of complacency that's going to allow you to continue being oppressed in their society. Black History Book was about the reclaiming and reinvention of concept. It was about understanding why anti-black violence, militarism, uh, capitalist exploitation, as I said in the piece about King, are fundamental parts of keeping America and an imperial society like America a stable Western democracy. If we continue to accept violence and claim the people who fight against violence, be they people like King, X, the Black Panthers, Robert F. Williams, or even people like Dorner, if we simply bind to the way that American society characterizes them, we lose the power of how people are choosing, be it nonviolent or giving their own lives, to understand fights 
for freedom. The question here is whether or not black people are brave enough to understand their own history, to understand what people are actually fighting for, not the symbolism of nonviolence, but why King, for example, fought against poverty and imperialism, and is that the basis that black people are going to use to fight for new civil rights, to articulate new strategies, to actually educate people? Those become the questions that black history should confront, should ask us to confront and ask. Unfortunately, you know, we make it a, uh, a constant public relations front and none of those things ever get hurt well said dr tommy curry how can folks find you uh hit me on twitter at dr tjc you've been listening to ready news review the podcast with america's independent voice rob ready presented by reading communications incorporated for all the pressing news you need to know log on to www.readynewsreview.com